Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Foundations. Nobody can be saved outside the name of Jesus. And this is a sticking point to a lot of people. But this is scripture. This is exactly the truth. No other name given for salvation. And that's actually what his name means. Jesus' name means salvation. Yeah. Foundations. Understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. On our last program of Foundations, we looked at the importance of giving names and using them properly. Of course, uh, these days, names uh, have become a bit of a uh, a strange thing in uh, sure various have. parts of our culture. Uh, strange names for kids, mostly for shock value, and a strange sense of individualism, I guess. But the biblical reasoning for giving names is very different, and how we use God's name in particular is very important. It is very, very important. I think in our particular culture... And I would say in general within Christendom in the West, we treat the name of God very much like we use the word love, quite casually and flippantly, or, and we've almost lowered it to humanize it to make God more comfortable and appealing. But, you know, the Bible actually says that we are to fear God. And when you've at first reading, again, without cultural context mm. and definitions, you think, what is? does God want us to be scared and frightened of him? And that word actually doesn't mean to be frightened of God, although it's a healthy reverential fear of God. Mm. I mean, sometimes I think we forget that he's the creator of the universe. So, you know, we, we, we looked at names again, you know, particularly the Hollywood elite who name their children some of the most bizarre names. You think these poor kids have got to grow up with this. And then we looked at how names can be a, a family tradition. Uh, then they can be, particularly in the Bible, they're, they're describing a circumstance, mm. the situation at the time. And um, if you look at the, the prophet Isaiah, he was told by God to marry a prostitute. And then the children that came from that marriage union were given terrible names. Mm. But they were well, prophetic, weren't they? They were speaking to the situation that Israel was in at the time. Exactly. Precisely. So they were they were given specifically to describe that circumstance. But having said that, you've still got these kids that have got to grow up with these yeah. really bad names. But there was a reason for it. As you said, there was a very strong prophetic reason. Just to back up a bit, we were talked, We just started to mention about why it's important that we hello God's name. What does that even mean? I mean, again, it's another name that we kind of go, hello. That's not what it means. <laughs> <laughs> to hello God's name was is to declare that it's holy, that it's precious, that it's high and it's lofty. Mm. So how we use his name is extremely important from a verbal point of view, but it's it's actually a lot more than that. It's it's how we actually live our lives so that we are because we've associated yeah, ourselves. We're representing his name, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. It's like we're ambassadors, scripture says. So I mean you can imagine like the Australian ambassador going to another country and behaving like a complete flip top lid, he's actually disparaging our country, mm. the name, yeah. the name of Australia that he's representing. So, you know, you, he'd be recalled immediately, he'd lose his job, and somebody with a little bit more respect and dignity would, would take his place. Mm. Well, that's exactly the same for us. So what, is, um, what does the Bible say about the name of Jesus? Uh, uh, would, would you mind actually just um, looking up Acts 4 and verses 11 to 12 and, and just read that out? So it says, uh, This Jesus, the stone rejected by you, the builders which have become the cornerstone, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by whom we must be saved. Is that not amazing? Mm. That's the power of his name. Actually, it's Psalm 130. Nine, verse four, I think I could be wrong there, but it's <laughs> Psalm 130 something where it actually says that God honors his word above his name. That's how powerful mm. his word is. And if there's salvation in no other name, then his word is even higher than that, which is why we need to take it so seriously. Yeah. Don't muck around with it and, and try to twist it to our own. Or we're not. To, it, it's not allowed to conform to us. We have to mm. conform to it. So, if there's salvation in no other name, none at all, then how amazing and important and powerful is His name? Nobody can be saved outside the name of Jesus. Mm. This is a sticking point to a lot of people. Um, but guess what? This is scripture. This is this is exactly the truth. No other name 
given for salvation other and that's actually what his name means Jesus's name means salvation yeah. okay so but what about the name of God how often do we say oh my mm. fill in the blank yep well it's become just a, a common saying isn't it the whole OMG thing that's just you know commonplace yeah so God has become an exclamation mark yeah. when we're shocked or angry mm-hmm that does not demonstrate respect or awe or reverence for his name. Yeah. So we've disparaged it. And, I mean, that is an easy habit to get into because it's a, it's, it's kind of an automatic thing to say mm. that. But as believers, we need to be a little bit more reverential and a little bit more careful how we use it. In, in Jewish culture, if they write the name G-O-D, it'll be G underscore D. Mm. They will never write yeah. it in full. And the reason is is that... If you've written it on a book or a piece of paper, it could be discarded, it could be damaged or, or torn or tossed away. You don't toss away God's name. Mm. That is why they have a burial service for used and worn out scrolls. It contains the name of God, so it's buried reverentially. They never destroy them because you don't destroy the name of God. Yeah. They don't even say his name. They will call him Hashem. Hashem means the name because from the lips of a sinful human creature by sheer that nature of our humanity was sinful. So to even just say it is enough to defile it. Mm. So that's why they call him Hashem. Yeah. That's how reverential they are rega- regarding the name of yeah. God. So I'm not saying we can't say the name God. Yeah, We can, but let's say it with respect mm. and reverence. Well, I think we can learn a lot from that, can't we? I mean, obviously, yeah. you, know, you can take it to uh, the nth degree, but I think that at the end of the day, there's a lot to be said for that, understanding that it is a reverential thing. It is. It, absolutely, it's a reverential thing. That's that's It's been drummed into them. God is holy, he's lofty, he's high, he's wonderful, there's power in his name and in no other. So it has to be used respectfully, carefully, and with great awe. In fact, you know, they won't even touch a, a, um, a Torah scroll with their hands. They use a, a little stick with a finger on it. Mm. It's called a yad. And they will read along the scroll with the yad. They don't want to put their fingers on it and defile it. Mm. It's not that they're worshipping the book itself or the scroll, but it's the word of God contained in it. They don't want to defile it. Mm. But then what about, um, again, going back to the name of, of Jesus? Okay, when we, we send our children out in public and we expect our children to behave because if they don't behave – they're going to bring the name of Warby into disrespect. <laughs> and and, dis, and pe- I don't, I mean, I used to say to my kids, I want you on your be- best behavior. I don't want people to look at you and go, oh, no, not those Warby boys. <laughs> I want people to look at you and go, oh, it's the Warbies. Geez, they're a nice bunch of kids, mm, you know? Yeah. I said, I don't want you to bring the family name into disrepute. Yeah. Well, Jesus is the same. And is, is, it's not a coincidence, Robbo, that. In our society, when somebody is upset or angry, they use the name of Jesus as though it's a curse word. Yeah. They don't say the name of Allah or Buddha or Krishna or Muhammad or Vishnu. It's always the name of Jesus. Mm. Now, we have an enemy. And if there is only power in the name of Christ that can bring someone to salvation, then if he can make the name of Jesus of so little value and worth that it's little more than a swear word, then he thinks that he's stripped the power out of his name. Now, we know that absolutely under no circumstances can the plans or purposes of God ever be thwarted. We know that. But as his representatives, as his ambassadors on planet Earth, before a world that is hostile, broken, um, sinful, reprobate, hurting, wounded, we have to be the ones who represent him well. So let's honor his name, use the name of God and Christ well, be the example, be the light, the Bible says. Mm. Let that light shine. Let's reflect his name well because they need it because they're not going to make it unless they come and call on his name. Well, it's a challenge for each one of us uh, to take on today to represent Christ's name well. This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.